This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let's go number two. I mean, I said to Larry, he, we do two of these at a time. And I said, you want to go number two? And then I realized what I was saying. So, hello, Larry. How you doing, hello. pal? <laughs> it's great. Uh, we just, we dodged a bullet. San Francisco almost got in the Super Bowl this year. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was, uh, that would have been two weeks of uh, hype and, uh, promo we didn't need here you're not the big uh, big uh, football fan are you i can watch football it's just like the but the super bowl is just so it's such a hyped event that uh okay in but fact, the only uh, the only professional football game i've ever been to was a super bowl my friend went a trip to the super bowl in 1980 is before i was doing stand-up and so you went i went yeah yeah you went for the trip you know, yeah, I, I was, it, got a trip. I was in L.A. It wasn't that far. So. Well, I uh, got to tell you something. I mean, you know, like you, I always kid you about the fact that you don't have a, a modern cell phone. Um, I, you don't have a, uh, you know, like a modern uh, TV set uh, because you don't you don't have a, you don't have Internet service in your apartment. Mm. And I always give you a bad time about that. But here's what you can give me a bad time about. I have no idea how football is played. <laughs> I've had the best try to explain it to me. I've had them do it on the show. I've, I've brought in, you know, was it Rice? What was his name? Uh, uh, the, the player uh, Rice was his last name. Oh, Jerry Rice. Jerry yeah, Rice. Great. I brought in, I think, um, the big guy from the 49ers years ago. Uh, oh, I remember, uh, yeah, he was on with me one morning, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Randy. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he was huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, Randy. Randy, Cro- Randy Cross. Right, he was on my show regularly. Yeah, uh, it was funny. Weekly. Anyway, I had the, all these football players try to explain football to me and how it's played. And none of them could do it. You know, because they always start about five steps ahead of where I have to start, and they go, "Well, then the uh, you get a down," and then I have to say, "Explain what a down is," and they <laughs> they go, "Well, a down is blah blah blah," and I'm going, "I don't understand any of this," okay, uh, and and uh, it it really is, uh, um, you know. Uh, a complicated game for me and you know baseball I understand it, baseball's very simple you know to, to, to understand it, it's a simple game uh, but it's a, this is not a simple game am I right or am I wrong do you understand you understand football right you understand what I have a basic understanding of it yeah but it is it is very complicated yeah baseball's much simpler um, um, baseball, you just, you know, you, it, it, and I understand it completely. You know something? I understand. I, I watch and understand curling. That I don't get at all. Yeah, but oh, well, I enjoy watching it for some strange. It's the brooms. <laughs> well, no, but it, it, there's something so easy about the game, you know? The guy gets on the ice and he slides down with the stone and then he lets it go. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going, come on, come on, hurry up, do this. It's not aggressive. And then then it finally gets to, uh, uh, they, they, they start brooming it. They start taking the broom and I guess you make it go different directions on the ice with the broom or whatever. And... You try to just knock off one of these 
these stones that's already in there that's maybe your opponents and it's all so easy there's no there's no power to it that, like, well that's the beauty of the simplicity it was must have been invented by guys who were bored in the country in canada <laughs> well you know i think it's very similar you know there's a italian game called bocce ball bocce ball yeah i run by the bocce ball court and, yeah uh, bocce ball is uh is uh, again that kind of simple game yeah, I mean, this is kind of an ice version of bowling, if it were. I don't know, you know, I, but I, but that I can watch and understand because well, it's, football is very complicated. I don't understand what's going on. I, I, I think you have to get to the other side of the field and then kick the ball over the uh, what is that thing? The goal post. <laughs> the goal post. <laughs> See? Well, yeah, yeah, you kick it. You try to get the ball, to take it over the goal line to get six points, or if you get close enough, you kick it through the goal post for three points. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's uh, incredibly. The men are huge. They weigh about three hundred and sixty pounds. It's a very violent game. But why is it the the uh, the quarterback? See, I do know something about it. The mm-hmm. quarterback is always not a big guy, not a big. Quarterback's heavy. very small usually. Yeah. Well, why is that? He's quick. So he's got to. He's got to run away from the big guys that are trying to crush him. Oh, I see. And the big guys just—they don't run very fast, do they? Uh, some for their size, they're actually fairly quick. Yeah. Well, if you're the small guy, you could probably run faster than the fat guys. Yeah, but you got like. Uh, six of them coming right at you. <laughs> and, yeah, well, and, uh, I'm, Those guys, I read that they're so beat up by the time they're 50, they're so arthritic they can barely get out of bed. But they're not as beat up as their wives. <laughs> That's true. Um, every time you turn around, there's another football player who's beat the crap out of his wife, you know? Yeah. Uh, but something, but, but you know why that happens? I think why they is because there's no turnoff switch. You know, it's like a guy who comes back from the war and then he's abusive to his wife and whatever. Maybe he go takes a gun and kills his entire neighborhood. It's because we turn on the switch, but we don't know how to turn it off. Mm-hmm. And these guys' switch is turned on, and it's turned on all the time because they got games to play all the time, and so that aggressiveness exists in their private life as well and that's why they wind up beating up their wives do you agree with that i can certainly see that sure yeah so you know I, I i'm not trying to excuse the behavior folks but i'm just saying this is why you know when you teach people how to be aggressive you also have to teach them how to stop it and they, they nobody's there to teach them how to stop it no off switch we send a guy off to war. He's supposed to kill people. Their bullets always flying at him and everything. He comes home. They say, oh, thank you for your service. But they do nothing to turn off the switch. You know, and say, now you're back in society. The rules are completely different. You know, which, of course, to me doesn't make any sense. Because if you can kill one place, you should be able to kill anywhere. Yeah, uh, you've got to... There must have been tens of thousands of people that just ruined that went to war and came back and were kind of shattered for the rest of their life. You know what really bothered me? The other day there was a story about they, they killed this guy from who's the head of ISIS, all right? And they killed him by bombing his home. I think they also killed his children and his wife as well. Okay? All right. And they're going, yay, we got the guy who's the head of al-Qaeda. We killed him. And I'm going... Do we really have to celebrate that? You know, I know. <laughs> we don't celebrate something like, oh, look, uh, name a mass murderer. Um, Charles, uh, Charles Manson. Uh, Charlie Manson, yeah. Look at Charlie Manson. Oh, <laughs> bravo, Charlie. You killed the, how many people did you kill, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> bravo. No, but when we kill somebody like the head of ISIS, we go, that's fine. Well, I mean, killing is killing, isn't it? So we've brought ourselves down to their level. Exactly. Exactly. You say, well, he'll kill again. Well, you know, he's not going to kill again. The guy who's going to replace him is going to kill again. So it doesn't really solve the problem, right? Yeah, and I thought 
Didn't they kill him in Syria? So I, uh, are we even illegally allowed to do something to oh, someone else's country? Who, who knows? Who knows? Anywhere a drone can fly, we can kill somebody. You know? Yeah. But uh, but I just I never I never got that the whole concept that we have. We just uh, so idolize murder, and I'm going. This is ridiculous. We're absolutely ridiculous. So you've been playing anywhere lately? Uh, I did a couple of sets. Attell had me go on the other night, and that was I hadn't been in front of a real crowd in forever, so that was actually kind of fun. Yeah, and how how did it go? It went uh, surprisingly well. I'm I'm getting to the point where I feel like I'm too old to be getting up on stage. The crowd's younger, but they seem like they really like me, so it was fun. Do you feel that you you confident enough? I mean, you've been doing this for how many years? You've been in comedy. Forty years. Forty yeah. years in comedy. Do you feel that after forty years, do do you? Do you feel you have control of that stage when you get on it? No, I don't. You uh, don't. It's a bad thing. But I never, I never got that, uh, the big thing, which Bob Saget told me as an open micer, you got to have that confidence, and I never really quite got it. Well, maybe but that's your act. A guy who doesn't I've have had, confidence. Yeah, I've had to fake it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, after 40 years, you're, uh, you, you know, you get up on any stage with any audience and probably... Put them in the palm of your hand. I mean, have you had any bad sets in recent years? Oh, sure. Really? I mean, ones yeah. where nobody laughed? I just, I can't, the last two years you can't count because you've been going up in front of like you know, eight people. But, yeah, uh, right. No, yeah, I think, eight, uh, eight people is scary. <laughs> yeah, I haven't bombed in front of a big crowd, I think, in a long time. Because people said to me, Gee, Alex, how do you get up in front of 8,000 people? Like the Frost Amphitheater, we had 8,000, 9,000 mm-hmm. people. How do you get up in front of eight or 9,000 people? I said, it's easy. Just get up there and do stuff. I said, I said, you know what's scary? He said, eight no. People. I said, the Holy City Zoo, when there's eight people yeah. in the audience. Well, that's I said, so that, true. And at the, the Frost Amphitheater, that, those are fun. And the, you go in a small club like that, that's nobody there. That, that's more terrifying. It's it's terrifying because you it's just eight people, you know? When you have 8,000 out there, it's just this body of humans. It it's a different, you know, it's easier, oddly enough, and not as frightening. And I was never frightened to get up in front of 8,000 people, but then once I went up in at the Holy City Zoo and I was humma humma humma, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, when was the first you did radio? When was the first time you actually did a live event? Oh God, I don't know. There was there was a time in my life where I was afraid of getting up in front of any kind of audience. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, I think it had maybe had to be in San Francisco. I think. Uh, although no, I you know when I was in Houston, I uh, for instance emceed the Rolling Stones concert. So wow. I got up in front at the Houston Coliseum or whatever. I got up in front of, oh, I don't know, in that those days about five, six thousand people. I don't know how many people filled that place, you know. Uh, and but even I remember then I was terrified to do it because you know getting up in front of all those people and whatever. But the time I finally I think had an an audience and and did the shows was with you guys. Uh, when we did our my my shows, my comedy shows, and uh, I learned how to work in front of an audience. You know, I learned pretty fast, oddly enough. You know, so yeah, you uh, you told me a trick to. Uh, you said to get the audience to applaud, and you just walk out. You just start clapping your hands yourself, and they start doing it. Now, I don't think I said that. Somebody else must have said that. Well, somebody told you that, then you told me. Yeah, oh, oh, okay. Uh, because I uh, I. I just never had a problem in San Francisco. I'll tell you why. The other reason why, it's a simple reason, is because these were all people who listened to my radio show. So all I had to do was either reference the radio show or, uh, you know, they were ready for me. Right. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to tell them who I was. I did, you know, when you go out on stage, say, in a strange town, you, your first five minutes is very important. Because yeah, nobody knows who you well, are. Well, also, your you your your comedy lives in a certain world, all right, and nobody else lives in that world. And now you have to bring them into it. 
Mm-hmm. Now, when you would do one of my shows, because they knew who Larry Brown was and what Larry Brown said and so on, you you got laughs from the minute you walked out on the stage. But if yeah, you go to a, a lot easier, go to a town where they don't know you. That first five minutes, am I right? The first five minutes oh, of yeah, your act yeah. is where you you establish who you are, and you. I I've said this before on the show. You you know you you told me before that the what was the joke you said establishes yourself to the audience oh someone stole my identity now his life sucks so. yeah and once you do that that joke in and of itself tells people oh this is who larry bubbles brown is. yeah yeah so that you just hit him with that right away so that that was always a good start yeah and then you go from there and uh they've now been brought into your world you know uh and uh, Bob Rubin used to have to be, br- drag people into his world. Uh, Bob Goldthwait used to have to drag people into his world before anybody understood what he was doing. And it's, uh, you know, it's important that you do that. But, you know, I used to be, I used to just be terrified to get in front of an audience. And then... Well, they'd always said that public speaking was one of the greatest fears of people. I don't know. Maybe that's true. Well, I've been getting up in front of the public. Uh, and then uh, uh, they said, well, the best thing to do is get up on stage and you think of everybody in the audience as being naked. And I never got that exactly. To me, that was <laughs> the weirdest. Because then I, then I said, well, then my greatest fear is standing up on stage and being naked myself. <laughs> and, you know. But they say, just imagine the audience is naked. And I'm going, that doesn't, that doesn't calm my fears. <laughs> You know, uh, outside of the fact that I'd be looking at some pretty ugly bodies for the most exactly. part. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so how's your love life? I never ask you this. How's your love life? Oh, I, nothing. I'm not even trying. Not even trying? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, oops. Yeah, I wish I oh. had some. <laughs> I wish you I hear that? That's my. Juicy. <laughs> that was my phone going off, but I, I just turned it off on my watch. Oh, you wouldn't understand this. Anyway, well, speaking of which, apparently Sprint is going to 5G, and I I have to get this done really soon because my flip phone's not going to work oh, on their yes. system anymore. Well, I mean, even like old iPhones, uh, Shecky, my friend Shecky, got a new phone for free. IPhone. Yeah, they said they give me a free. I can get a free Samsung a smartphone. Yeah, because they're going to five 5G, and they're doing away with all the old phones. They're doing away with all the, like, the, I think they're still going to do 4G, but the 3G and whatever. And what you have is probably, uh, you probably have the only cell phone in existence that has to be hooked into a wall. Anyway. <laughs> they said I could get a, they actually still have flip phones, but they said we can have about one of those a month. Uh, but just get a new phone. What were they willing to? What were they willing to give you? They're willing to give me a Samsung A three five or something. They said it's a pretty basic smartphone, but uh, yeah. I, I think I won't. I'll be like you with football. I won't be able to understand the goddamn thing, and I'll throw it against the wall. No, no, it's an Android. It's an Android system, which I'm not crazy about. But nevertheless, it's an Android phone. If they can give you an iPhone, which is Apple, I would take that over anything but you know then you'd have to, you have will I be able to figure the thing out I think so L- listen I'm telling you now the uh, the iPhone is the sim- is a pretty simple phone I mean to begin with uh, it th- making calls is the last thing it does <laughs> you know uh, whenever they go out and they're saying, "Here's the new iPhone. Here's what it has." They all talk about the the, the camera and the apps and the stuff. And the, oh, and by the way, it also receives calls. Yeah, this is the last thing they mention. Yeah. Uh, do you get texts on your current phone? I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I could text you actually. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but other than that, I just you know, what the hey. Yeah. I kind of like texting. You don't have to talk to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't have, you see now you're you're getting in with it. Now all you have to do. <laughs> is, no, but I'm saying if you were to get a new phone, I would get 
just one of the new smartphones. Uh, it, Apple would be my preference for you. Uh, they're very simple to use. Um, they, they're very easy to understand. Um, but, you know, and if you want to make a call, making a call is the simplest thing in the world. You just go to the little icon that's a phone, and it, the program comes up, and you dial who you got to dial. You know. Well, I'll take a look at it. I'm already afraid of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, we all we all get afraid of stuff. You know, Marjorie, my wife, she takes her forever to get used to something new. And my friend Shecky, he he still wants uh, he still wants Windows Seven in his brand new oh, computer. Really? Yeah, he can't understand his new computer. And I'm going. Well, you know that the trouble is the thing is that computers were made to be simple. But they've gotten more complex. But all you have to understand is you just got a bunch of different programs that you initiate by clicking on them. And then what you really have to understand is the program that you're using, not the phone. The phone is as easy as you know pushing something with your finger to make it come up. But the, the, uh, you know, the, the different uh, applications, maybe you have to understand how some of them work. So I wouldn't be afraid of it. I think your problem is you go into it being afraid. I've told people before, if you're afraid going into it, then you're never going to be able to master it. I know. But if you're not afraid of it, just just realize it exists and that it's there to serve you, then I think it'll be okay. You know. Uh, but then again, you're Larry Bubbles Brown. There's no accounting for that. So yes. You know. Low IQ. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, uh, I, uh, you know, I mean, it, I, I'll tell you something. My big problem now in life is that I, you, you remember me with computers, right? Who was the first guy you ever knew who used a computer? You, yeah. And who was the first guy to ever bring a portable computer into a radio studio? Mm -hmm. Me. They told, in fact, at, at, uh, at Live 105, they told me, don't use that computer while you're on the air. It distracts you. You know, and now today, if you go to any studio in America, they've got computers there, and everybody's looking at a computer. So I mean, you know, it it it. it I loved, I loved technology, and I loved the internet, and I loved what the computer could do, and and the future it could bring. And I've decided it's caused us nothing but misery. <laughs> You know, uh, it, it really, I mean, people used it for all the wrong reasons. I mean, this call that just came, came in here, robocall. Yeah, those are out of control. Yeah. I mean, and people hacking and, and other countries hacking us and our infrastructure. And I'm going, that beautiful future I thought about has turned into a nightmare. You know, so I'm, I'm becoming a major Luddite based upon the fact that it the promise of the future wasn't the promise of the future. It just made things ugly. It also made the government easier to spy on you and a, a whole bunch of crap like that. Yeah, it makes it real easy to set up a police state. It, it, it absolutely does. You know, so, I mean, uh, I, I just, you know, I, I just wish that people were using it for all the right reasons and not all the wrong reasons. And uh, it, it has not made my life easier. You know, I, I keep thinking about when I was a kid and the simplicity of when I was a kid. I grew up in the, in the I was born in 1939, so I grew up in the 40s. You grew up when? In the 50s? In the 50s. In the 50s. 50s. Our lives were so much better then. I really believe so, you know? And we didn't, have the, so, we, yeah. and we didn't have the technology because technology should not dictate your quality of life. And I was a pretty happy kid. You know, I had a good life in Marin County, and you know my parents were middle class, and we survived. I remember, you know, it's always always a little hard. It was paycheck to paycheck, which, by the way, came in the form of an actual paycheck. You know, how do clubs pay? Do they pay you by check now? They pay by check. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just thought, the old days. I just thought they might have direct deposit. You know, uh, actually, a lot of the uh, smaller clubs are do they do Venmo and PayPal. Oh, okay. Well, those that's not direct deposit, but it's another form of paying. You, yeah. So. so, yeah, yeah. 
So anyway, they ask me, "Do you have a Venmo?" And I just hold up a flip phone. I don't even know what Venmo I'll, I'll, I'll is. I'll get you a check. I haven't used Venmo. I use a thing called Zelle. Which is the bank has like Marjorie when she wants to send me some money to pay me for something, she d- does it through Zelle, and uh, she can just send money bank to bank. It's Zelle is very good, but okay. Anyway, that's uh, that's about it for us uh, this time. Uh, we'll get together again next week. Have some more we fun. Will. Fun with Larry. I enjoy Larry. <laughs> Larry's a smart guy, and he's fun to talk to. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Bye bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Larry Brown, I always love to talk with Larry, as you know. Uh, it's a big deal with me. I think he's terrific, and he's a really great guy, great guy. Anyway, um, and uh, uh, absolute, uh, not a Luddite. I can't say he's a Luddite. A Luddite would hate uh computers and things like that technology he doesn't so you know that's it well we have only one person waiting in our waiting room tonight thanks a lot (laughs) you know i mean come on or maybe it's because they say say, oh alex starts at five minutes after that we should be just you know i mean i what i could do is just play another interview here if you want me to (laughs) nobody's gonna call Anyway, um, you know, I got to tell you something. Here's the power of commercials, okay? There's a commercial on the air about a guy. He's on a date with a woman, and uh, she looks at him, and she gets a sour look on her face because it turns out that his, um, uh, uh, let me see here. We're going to do something here. Hold on a moment. Um, Because uh, he... um, he has a, uh, something wrong with his shirt. And what it is, is this, right? Have you seen that? Where it's like all... Mm-hmm. So every night when I go on, I worry that this is not tight enough, okay? And, and uh, you know, come on. I'm, I'm not going to go buy the stuff that you they say to use to make those not droop because they got all kinds of chemicals in them and everything. But every night before I go on, I'm going, is this okay? Is this all right? Because I saw that damn commercial. Here, let me see. I could I could get a like a clothespin and then do that, okay? But then that accentuates this. What what is this? When did I get that? When I start looking like an iguana. That's what I don't understand. That's part of the aging process. Looking like an iguana. Well, we have two people here, okay? Yeah, yeah. Two people here. Let's admit them uh, and see what uh, what happens here. Uh, I have to go to my Zoom panel, and there they are. It's uh, it's Jeff, who can always be counted on, and Alan, who can always be counted on. Hello, everyone. Hello, um, uh, Jeff. You got to go find your. Oh, he pushed the wrong button, and we lost him. He was trying to back. get his audio. He'll be back. Huh? Uh, I should talk him through this sometime, I guess, you know? So it's just you and me, huh? Yeah. 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 There'll yeah. be more. Yeah. You just eating I mean, your way you know, through. When, when you did the thing with the Will Durst wife and several people, you do run into about 8.05 for me, about five minutes after. Mm-hmm. And I've been noticing people been coming on about five minutes after. Well, you know. Uh, gee, the first part of the show was fun. St- uh, be- become join I, it. I enjoyed the first part of the show listening yeah. to you talk to Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah, last I night, last night, I, last night I was listening to you guys on uh, Jack's show, and and God, you know, I was really I, I I was disappointed in you guys last night. Oh, and I'll tell you why. Jack brings up topics like who is the best music composer, right? Who, whose music do you think was the great composer? Well, how do you do that? You know, I mean, a composer of what? You know, if you say, oh, you know, uh, uh, I think somebody said, uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, Chelsea Morning, what, what, what's her name? Uh, Joni Mitchell. 
And I'm going gee, to myself, gee, Joni Mitchell sucks. <laughs> you know, she just absolutely sucks. Why don't you uh, talk to Jack about how to set up his show differently? At least at the end, he doesn't say goodnight to Jack Benny and all the other people anymore that are all dead and don't hear them. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, uh, 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 I don't tell Jack, I don't tell anybody what to do with their show because I don't like people telling me what to do with my show. Me to well, do what the, to do with the my boss, show. You're the boss, though. Huh? You're the boss. Uh, um, uh, wait a minute. Uh, let's see here. Uh, who is Brian the Feel Goods? I bet it's. Well, there's Kevin, and there's Brian. Oh, where are you, Brian? No, oh, well, he's connecting his audio. Where are you calling from, Brian? Wait a minute. He's he, okay. You there, Brian? Can you hear us? I'm here. How you doing, Alex? Yeah. Uh, uh, have you called the program before? I I think. Yeah. I, I yeah. I try to only call when I'm in the bathtub. <laughs> is there a re- is there a reason for that? Do we uh, during tubby time? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's just a habit of mine. I, I, I just like to call you when I'm in the bathtub. Oh, so. okay, okay. But what happens if you have to get out of the bathtub? Uh, you see my pecker. <laughs> I, I stand up. Uh, well, you know you I mean? just turn your camera the other way because I don't. I don't want to get a lot of heat from YouTube. Okay. Well, For, then that's what I'll do because I'm a good sport, Alex. So well, I, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you're not here to ruin my <laughs> show by showing here. Pecker, I have. Okay. Where did that term ever come from? Pecker. Uh, you know, like uh, pecker. Like a, <laughs> I don't know. East Coast thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a Jersey thing. Yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. I. Uh, and where are you calling from? Are you calling from the tub? Obviously. Yeah. You know, from a from a tub in New Jersey. In New Jersey, Jersey. a tub in New Jersey. Uh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, speaking of New Jersey, I, had, I saw an item today about New Jersey. There is one little area in New Jersey where you have a pocket of immense amounts of COVID, COVID deaths, COVID. Uh, uh, and I'm trying to remember where it was. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, Perth Amboy. Uh, is it Perth Amboy? No. I, I don't know. I know. I is that. Perth Amboy in New Jersey? Well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. We, it, we've had a history. You'd think it'd yeah. be near Philly, but we uh, a lot of the COVID pockets going back were up near Red Bank and all, which is right that across. was it. That was it, because yeah. they call yeah, it they, they, they call it Red Vid or something like that because it it's only Republicans who are dying. Your it's, color's it, better, it, Phil. Yeah, I'm yeah. dying. <laughs> well, it's right across from New York. It's a lot of the New York money that comes into New Jersey, so they can live in the suburbs. Yeah, uh, Bruce Springsteen's from that area. A lot of old money up there. Uh, that's where John Stewart retired with his farm up there. That that, that whole area right there. But yeah, Red, and we vacation up there all the time. We love it up there. Yeah, but, but yeah, maybe that, that isn't the place it. then. But there's some place where it's it's highly Republican, and uh, the people they're dying. They're faster and more of them than anywhere else in in this part of the country. The Jewish home for the aged. Yeah, the Jewish home for the aged, right. They're all dying. What are you doing here tonight, Phil? I heard you yelling, I got nobody. So I uh, try to Uh, get on. I didn't didn't say your name three times. It doesn't matter. (laughs) I was going to say nobody and he answers. Yeah, yeah, I saw you were in pain, and I stepped up to the plate. Really, I'm more. I'm worried more about this. It's, the, oh, yeah. God, it's wrinkled. I, you should be ashamed well, of yourself. No, but I, I saw that thing with the guy out on a date, and his girl, the girl who's with him, does. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one with yeah. with the shirts down to his uh, thing. Puppet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You, should, you should be ashamed. You're a big time. A uh, uh, radio personality, and mm-hmm. your and your shirt is wrinkled. Mm. Oh, here comes Jack Bishop. By the way, here comes and Jack his shirt's Bishop. wrinkled too. Is it really? No, he's just wrinkled. Uh, <laughs> Bill spent all that money on a green screen, and all he's got is the desert behind him. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice picture. Yeah. Dreary desert. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Jack. Wait Hello minute. there, Governor. Okay, now I was I was I was talking about you for a few minutes. Yes, ago. I I heard. Yeah, that's yeah. why he's here. And I yeah. I heard you guys talking about who 
who was like a who's your favorite songwriter? I think it was right. Yeah. 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 And and people were coming up with some numb nuts <coughs> answers like Joni it Mitchell. Just, it was just people's opinions. You know, it, 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 I say, didn't ask them to, to have say a. Joni Mitchell was a a great composer is going to be big news to Beethoven. You know? Well, that was one person's choice. My choice was Harold Arlen, who well, nobody he, has ever heard of. Right? I've, 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 you I've, like I've uh, Barry Arlen. Manilow? Aren't you a Barry Manilow guy? <laughs> but actually, his writing partner Yip Harburg was amazing. Yeah. Was amazing. Yeah. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, and they wrote the uh, score for the Wizard of Oz. Yes, we mentioned that last night. Yes, but I can name a better composer. Well, uh, I'm Should a Harold Arlen show. fan because he wrote the t tune that uh, uh, Don and I call our song. Until the real thing comes along, about two people who meet late in life. Mm -hmm. and get married, fall fall in love, get married, mm -hmm. and they say this will have to do until the real thing comes along. I think that's, there are a lot of... Well, out of pure... Um, pure uh, and, and nobody mentioned who I consider... Well, actually, the three people I consider the greatest songwriters of the 20th century. Okay. Okay. One of them is John Lennon. Definitely. Incredible lyrics. Incredible Definitely. lyrics. Uh, and the second one is um uh, uh wait a minute hold on a second my mind is a blank Paul Simon. Guy. no no way john prime no no okay uh, uh, uh oh uh well oh chuck berry napoleon the 14th oh stop it <laughs> no uh, chuck berry because if you listen to Ly berry's lyrics they're extraordinary they are just extraordinary and my favorite composer of the traditional sense was Cole Porter. Cole Porter, nobody beats Cole Porter in my mind. Well, the only problem with Cole Porter is uh, was that he was too hip for the room for the people that he was working for. No, he was just, no, it was, it, it was an airy addition that he had. Yeah, made him too, too, too fancy but, for the room. But, but uh, I would say you, you're forgetting two great songwriters of uh, the latter part of the 20th century, Smokey Robinson, who wrote the greatest nah, rock. Nah. Nah, okay, that's your opinion. Nah. Smokey Robinson, mm. and of course, the man who writes for the common man in country music, Willie Nelson. Yeah, well, Willie Nelson's done some fine stuff. But I'm talking about the the craft of, of songwriting, in which, uh, uh, for instance, John Lennon made the lyrics fit like a glove. They just, the words just rolled into each other. You I think know. what you're missing, Alex, is the Jacks group is not that sophisticated. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, how about thank it, you, Kevin? Thank you, Doc. Appreciate that. No problem. No problem. Anytime. You know, I mean, but how you can say Joni Mitchell? Ugh. Because the person liked Joni Mitchell. Oh, I didn't God. ask them to grade these people on a curve. Yeah, but I mean, I, it's just, them, I, like? I was just amazed with the answers that people were giving. You know, it, it, did well, you hear it at all, uh, Kevin? You, you're nodding your head there. Yeah, I, I heard uh, Mike say Truckin' was written by Jerry Garcia, who actually did write part of it, but Bobby Ware and Phil Lesh also wrote it, but actually um, Robert Hunter wrote most of the lyrics for all the Grateful Dead songs. Okay. So you know, I mean, it, I just, I just think that you to say, w give me one, you know, it's impossible to name one. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, yeah, there, there were a lot of great. No matter what you're, what you're thinking of at the time, really. Well, you got to yeah. remember what I said. Give me your favorite. I didn't say give me the best. I said give me your favorite. Well, please don't ask that question again, because they really came up with some stupid answers. <laughs> well, I don't have the intellectual crew that you have like uh, wait a minute let me see who's on that well panel. we have somebody in a bathtub tonight oh well hey <laughs> and jeff now now jeff would probably have a very erudite answer that's yeah. a new word i just learned by the way alex uh, yeah uh, probably a republican and erudite <laughs> yeah hey alex yeah hey every now and again somebody will bring up this conversation because it's a totally original conversation mm -hmm. 
And and uh, I'll say uh, I, I'm a big fan of George. Turned me on to many many years ago, mm-hmm. and get them to say, "Who's George Formby?" Oh, George Formby! I, I love George yeah. Formby. Isn't that the guy that refinishes tables on TV? No. Oh, that's Homer <laughs> Formby. Haven't you heard of this? <laughs> the, the, no. the hit song uh, "Chink in a Window" uh, uh, or, or or the Window Washer song. There's a lot of great songs. Or the Airman. Uh, was it uh, the Air Raid Warden? Air Raid Warden. You know, I I, yeah, I would like pl- the I, for the pillow guy. No, I would play some of his music here, but I then I uh, I'd get all kinds of pay. problem with having to not pay, but they won't they demonetize me and you know it's a copyright warning and all that crap. But uh, no uh, cleaning windows. Uh, That's it. Uh, you know. And, hey uh, Brian, is that the real badger brush, or uh, are you using? Come on, we're not talking about his bath habits. Yes, it's, 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 real, it's real badger. You can tell by the color tones. And I am using a straight razor because I'm old school and I listen to George Formby, so I, live, I I use old shit. Great razor. Oh yeah. In the bathtub. God. Yeah. Is that is that so you can collect the blood? Is that why you do it in the bathtub? Yeah. Oh. Well, I used to do very badly with uh, with straight razors and things like that. My it's so much so my floor was just littered with little Japanese flags. Oh, uh, <laughs> you, you got them. And... Yeah. <laughs> now that they've got these razors with five blades, mm-hmm. I can actually shave without cutting myself. Well, you know what? I, here, here's here's something I bet you don't face? have. I, here's something I bet you don't have right now. And I used to have it always around because I figured you really needed it. Okay, and mm-hmm. it was called a styptic pencil. Do you remember? I styptic? had one of those. Yeah. yeah, it was white. It came in a little tube, and you would touch your face where you cut yourself. And it would coagulate the blood. But yeah. you know, I still you, have one. Do you know what 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 a styptic pencil is? Uh, no, actually, I don't. It's salt. Oh. Yeah, it's just salt. And what you're doing is putting salt on your on your wound. Uh, don't rub it in. Uh, but it's salt on your wounds, and that just stops the, uh, immediately bleeding. stops the bleeding. Yeah. But you don't yeah. need it that much anymore because uh, m- most of these razors today don't cause that problem anymore. Although... I- what were you going to say, Brian? He cut his nose off now. I was going to say, I got one right there. I mean, but, you know, I mean, this is me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a weirdo. Okay, well, why don't you cut off your nose to spite your face? <laughs> Thank you. Coming right up. <laughs> there we go. Can I ask a really bizarre question that came up, not last night, but came up in conversation mm-hmm. uh, last night between me and Donna? We ordered... Chinese, mm-hmm. and uh, or as I as meant, Tony Tony calls that, it. That's what I said. That's yeah. what I said. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, I got to thinking. My stepson, like your wife, uh, has been to China, and the world's largest McDonald's is in Beijing. When la- when last I heard, so I wonder. In Actually, China, the, the McDonald's isn't as present in China as one other um oh, KFC. KFC, KFC there's something like four oh, over at least when we left there were over four thousand in China. Well as far as I knew the world's largest McDonald's was in Beijing Could with be. capacity for two thousand people. Hmm. So I w- started thinking what do the Chinese call going out for McDonald's? You know, what is their generic or derogatory, even better yet, derogatory term for going to get American? Hmm. I I have no idea. <laughs> Ask Marjorie. I bet she knows. No, I, 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 I don't think she knows. Yeah, uh, the corporate and McDonald's, especially in corporate America, has been known to assimilate to their cultures. Like um, McDonald's in India, they, they don't serve cow. You know, oh. like, you know, so I, I don't know. Like, I think the whole idea behind corporate America is be of the people, even if they might be foreign. 
I mean, we don't necessarily buy a Toyota now and think we're buying foreign because they don't try to be foreign. Well, in- so I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's cut and dry like that, like going out to get American. I, I don't think that's what they're going for when they're when they're opening up right. restaurants. KFC, over there. KFC in China serves duck. Exactly. Really? Yeah, uh, but uh, they have Ronald McDonald. Uh, <laughs> Good question. Good there's, question. There's, I'll tell you, there's got to be a joke there, but I can't think it right now. Yeah. Ronald McDonald. Huh? Imagine Ronald McDonald was a Chinese man. There's something wrong with that. McDonald's? Ronald McDonald, the clown. You have to order <laughs> off two menus one from column A, two from column B, that, that is and, joke and the fish sticks. So, so, so the Chinese eat a lot of. Uh, uh, yeah. McDonald's food because Ronald McDonald's a clown, but when they eat it, clowns don't taste funny. What? No. Forget yeah. it. Clowns are supposed to be funny. It's yeah, they messed up the joke. Hey, that's as bad as some of my material. Get a new writer like I'm working on. Oh shit! Huh? Do you think he stole the material from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jack Benny. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Jack then, Bishop. <laughs> yeah. Bishop. But um. um in China, uh, it, it, it we had uh, we were this close to going to a KFC because we were in Gulin, and it was late at night, and we had spent the day out, and we were hungry, and we were going to go out and look for food, and we passed by a KFC, and Marjorie said, "No way," really? and I said, "But I would like to go to a KFC in China because I'll bet it's a different menu, and they yeah, do like they do have like chicken, it. but they also have duck." as well so how many have you of you have ever been to england yeah here yeah uh, have you ever gone to a place called wimpy's they say that they have the 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 home of the real american hamburger yep you ever had a, a wimpy burger the wimpy yep. wimpy's i don't know if they're still around i i do know that mcdonald's went over there originally mcdonald's sold the rights to mcdonald's to another yep. company and they called it McSomething else. They didn't call it McDonald's. And it was terrible. It In was Israel, terrible. there was a guy that got sued. He called himself McDavid's. And I think they also went into uh, into France as well. And McDonald didn't like the way they were making French fries. So uh, they pulled as I'm soon treated. as as soon as the the you know the the thing was up. Their deal was up. They immediately took it over and waited a few years. They didn't do it immediately, but then they went back in. And um, I can't remember, it was called Mc, uh, something. And I'm trying to remember what the name was now. But it was not not McDonald's. Don't, don't they call French fries in France palm frites? Yeah, yeah. But also, by the way, also, uh, these places were like not the same colors as McDonald's. They were blue and white. Rather than yellow and white. Well, yellow and red and white. Huh? Blue and white, isn't that White Castle's uh Oh, yeah. It logo? could be. Yeah. yeah, it could be. But anyway. Um, the Wimpy the wimpy Burger is just grease on a bun. It's <laughs> absolutely the worst burger ever. And uh, so if I, I guess none of you have ever uh, tasted one. Oh, you, you have? What, yeah. what, what, yeah. what movie was... Um, Wimpy's a prominent part of. Was that Ghostbusters? The Donald Trump movie. No. <laughs> Doesn't he own Wimpy? Doesn't he own Wimpy's? It's perfect for him. It was a British film, and it was with Dudley Moore, and I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Um, I and, wanted to come but, out. But he works where, where he sells his soul to the devil, mm. played by Peter Cook. And oh. um, uh, it was... Uh, um, let me see here. He he was he, but it starts out. He's a loser, and he works at Wimpy's. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but wait, be, 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 be Arthur. No, not be Arthur. No. no, Arthur. Arthur. No, 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 Arthur. no, no. Arthur was no, no, set in New York. No, uh, uh, I'd like gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger hold today. Hold on a second. Let me let Never me let me money. look here. Yeah, at the uh, Dudley money. Moore. <laughs> list here and i'll tell you immediately Ooh, as soon as i uh more it was it was actually a dudley moore peter cook film and they both wrote it dudley moore here we go uh now 
I don't want Arthur. I just want Dudley Moore. Screw you. Oh, God bless hey, Brian, me. you missed the spot. Let me see here. Dudley Thanks. Moore. <laughs> Dudley Moore. Okay. Bill is under the water. Bedazzled. Bedazzled. I didn't see that. Yeah. Didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, Alan has a friend that has a handlebar mustache, mm -hmm. and he belongs to a club of, uh, and they go to a convention with these handlebar mustaches. You, you, you remember, hey, Alan, who's who's your friend? Oh, oh Ken. Yeah. yeah. He's a retired San Francisco cop. Yeah, and he's got a big handlebar mustache. Mm. Phil, Phil's jealous. Well, I, could uh, uh, I think that, for instance, Brian here has a really great beard you know uh i can never get mine to grow out that far or maybe i've never let it try but mm. the upkeep on the beard what you know people think ah, a guy grows a beard and he doesn't have to do anything with it um, mm. what do you do with yours uh kevin trim it just like that yeah but, so, you, but, you gotta, but, but but you gotta do it pretty regularly otherwise it's, no alex you have beard yes. envy I have beard envy. Oh, as long yeah. as we're talking toiletries, I'm going to do a little manscaping. There you go. <laughs> this show has really evolved. <laughs> and he was bitching about my show last night when well, we talked about music. Look, these, yeah, here little, is. these little girls do grooming tips and, and makeup <laughs> tips. They have 2 million followers. This is Alex's effort at, at getting his first million. Kevin, shooting Kevin, for the crossover can... audience, huh, Bennett? Yeah. See, Phil, Phil <laughs> uses a the straight razor for when he does his man no, 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 no. speech. Yeah. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys want to know the tip for growing a good beard? I, I always, for years and years, I had a chin strap beard, real close, real close. And mm -hmm. I just use a buzzer with a really low setting and I kept it close. Because I can't grow it under here and all that. I have a lot of weird spots. The number one thing they'll tell you if you go to any beard shop where they do all the hipster beards, mm -hmm. they say you got to grow it out. You got to be like a complete animal. Don't cut nothing, and you just grow it out until it's insane. Right? Easy top. Yeah. yeah. Just when you just grow Worse it out, until it, and then you bring it in, and then you can have an awesome beard. Because I could never do this before until I grew it out for COVID. So, so like I have these weird spots under here that don't grow. Mm -hmm. So this, this is much longer, but it makes up for it, and now it looks fine. Okay, that that's very good. Uh, but now here's the problem. That's how I did it. Here's the how problem. How many listeners do we have now? Uh, less than we had before. Mine is uh, twelve. But I don't, okay. So I, you need a little girl grooming herself. That's I guess. Do you how know that? Do you know the Monday show has hit over a thousand? Boy, yeah. you, know, you got this little girl thing on on your mind, don't you? Anyway, anyway, here with Brian uh, uh, and and uh, Kevin, uh, are I know Kevin's married. Are you married, Brian? Yeah, there's banging on the door right now to get in and to the bathroom because this is the only bathroom in the house. So I might have to leave. Speaking of it, but yeah, but let me ask you this: Yeah, how does she feel about that beard? You're assuming it's a she. I, yeah. What are you doing that for? Um, I, it's German <clears throat> Shepherd? I have shaved it off before, and I've traumatized the whole family. Really? So they like yeah. it. They mm -hmm. like it. How about you, Brian? I mean, Kevin? Yeah, I did it once, too, and scared the hell out of my daughter. She didn't know who I was. Who the cops? Who yeah, you take on a different personality, don't you? I didn't tell anybody, and I turned around, and I walked up to behind her, and she goes, oh, shit, you know, like. Who was that? I didn't, I didn't shave this morning and I got stubble. Can you tell? Really? No. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I, I haven't I, shaved I, for I, two I, days I, and I'm about to go crazy. With, I haven't with... shaved till uh, since um, uh, what is it? Uh, I haven't I haven't shaved till since uh, Saturday. Okay. I, I am the kind of person fashion. that shaves every day okay. and very close shave. Now, uh, during COVID, I was wearing mask and I was able to get away with not shaving every day. And uh, that would be one good reason to bring back COVID, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and the masks. You know, you wear a mask, you didn't have to shave. Yeah, well, um, 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 I, uh, Marjorie 
I started letting this grow out. As you notice, it's longer than it was. Uh, it's not long like you guys, but it was lo it's long, longer than it was. Uh, and uh, 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 I, I forgot to ask uh, Jeff. Jeff, your wife likes your beard? Yeah, I think so. I love it. Uh, oh, okay. She, she loves just, it. Just, we just heard from her on the side there. She loves it. it. It's right. time that Tony started to groom himself. You know, can you do your hair, because Tony? Because I hear, I hear the, the reason David Letterman grew his beard like it is, yeah, is to piss off his wife and his kid. I thought he didn't want to be recognized. <laughs> no, no. Uh, listen, he's probably more recognized now with the beard that oh, way yeah, right. than he ever could have could be if he just like walked down the street. You know. Um, but um, he, um, uh, but some people, you know, like some wives hate beards. I mean, they just hate them, you know. But you're you're lucky. You and uh, uh, do you have a woman in your life, uh, um, Alan? Yes. Mm -hmm. How does she feel Phil. about it, Bill? Well, oh, she has a tail <laughs> and goes bah. No, I, I, yeah, I have, I have no girlfriend right now. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. You, nothing right you have no now. Would you like right one? Now. I've got one I can kill, recommend. Kill I'm single. trying to. I got a, uh, a stepdaughter. We're trying to get rid of and we'll Son. take any bits. Really? Like How eBay. old is she? Fifty-one. Oh, a youngster. That's cool. You'd be robbing the cradle there, Alan. I know. That's what I was. Thinking. She lives at home with you. No, no, she, she wants to move back with us, but we're saying, no, we've got cats. What does that have to do with it? Yeah, really. We've got people we take care of. We've got cats. You've got cats. Oh, okay. Sure, you know, you know, um, cats are, she, well, you had cats. When Alex I, is a cat person. Yeah. yeah, you know, cats require, you know, they, they require a lot of attention. My cat gets up on me and says, you will revere me, human, as you're supposed to. Yeah. Well, the the thing about cats, I mean, I love cats. Cats are my favorite pet. Uh, but I and I would get a cat now, except for that Marjorie would like to get one too. And I just said to her, "Look, do you really want an animal in this house where every time it looks at you, it's thinking, you know, I'm going to be here long after you're gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why don't you adopt <laughs> an older one?" You know, like rescue an, an older cat. If I could find one that's on the edge of death, I think. Well, no, maybe, you know, maybe. some with a few years in it. Yeah. yeah. Our yeah. problem with our cats is uh, they live long. We, our youngest cat that we have right now is 14, 15 years old. I had a cat that lived to be 19. I had a cat that lived to be 19, and we have his ashes in a drawer. Here at the house. And I told Donna, when I pass on, put my ashes by and his. The cats and flush it down the toilet. <laughs> no. And the same horse that you rode in on, too. Yeah. I told her, put me by the cat and put a TV remote control over the two of us. And it'll be just like it was when we were both alive. Mm to sit with me and watch the same TV programs every night. Well, but you can't, you know, you can't do things like the cat does, like sit on top of, remember the old days of the flat top television sets? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cats used to love to sit up there. Two reasons. It's warm, warm and everybody is looking at them. Or they think yeah. everybody's looking at them. They're actually looking at the TV set. And then they will sit there, they would sit there on top of the TV set and start licking their balls with one leg straight up in the air. Which was something I always envied them for being able well, to Well, what do. I was gonna do with my cat when he died was I was gonna stuff him and then stuff him in the position I, he most loved and that was him licking his balls, you know, and just put it on like a coffee table or something. Now, uh, like your cat used to poop in the tub. <laughs> was it that your cat was mad at you? Is that why it, it pooped in the tub? Well, he it. at least I knew where it was. Yeah, you know, and 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 we knew when he was taking a dump because we could hear clunk, clunk. Yeah, right. But the it, other one that would pee on the to in the toilet. There was one that Did peed that in the one toilet. Poop in the no, no, he she didn't poop in the um, in this. In the she didn't poop, it was the other one that pooped in the tub. Yeah, and and people would say to me, "Well, gee, um, isn't that terrible?" And I said, "Well, I know where it is. You know, I just yeah, clean it up, and that's it. I, you know, it's not like I have to, you know." 
And the problem also was that they said, well, gee, if he could just get him to do something, does he urinate there too? I said, no, he goes down towards the other end and does it over the drain. But yeah. you can train a cat to use a toilet. Well, my cat, I, I, had a, I didn't have to train my cat to use the toilet. But my that cat was blind. Yeah, well, she became blind. Ouch. She wasn't blind. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't blind at the time. I like that cat. Yeah. I, mean, I don't like cats, but I like that cat. Yeah, but she used to literally one one night I'm sleeping and I all of a sudden I hear somebody peeing in the toilet and I look over <laughs> to my wife who at that time was uh, who was it at the time Susan Susan, and I I looked over and she was there and I'm going who's, who's peeing in the in the toilet and I run in. And there's nobody there. So I go, okay, well, I don't know what. That's probably my imagination. It's probably part of a dream. Next night, I'm sleeping. All of a sudden, I hear somebody peeing in the, in the toilet. And I go in, and there's nobody there. But I see these two little wet footprints mm -hmm. on the toilet seat. Mm -hmm. And That's the next night it happens, I go in there, and there's the cat sitting there on the toilet taking a pee. And you know, Susan, you know, Susan told me that yeah. Mouse, the name of the cat was Mouse, Mouse, for many weeks before that, was sitting there while she was taking a pee, watching her do it mm. intently. And so apparently she said, well, she does it that way. I guess I can do it that way. So we didn't have to train her how to do it. She just did it. And yeah. people said, well, does she crap in there too? He said, well, we can't expect everything. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to do number one and number two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the little thing. But uh, it, it, we didn't have to train her how to do it. She just did it and did it for the rest of her life. You know, yeah. even, when she, when she even when she became blind and he, she even did it when she was blind. Yeah, oh, I remember. Funny. By the way, I always oh. wondered something, by the way, uh, and I, I finally um, uh, asked him. Um, I always wondered if you're blind. How do you know when you're through wiping your ass? <laughs> Use your thumb. And I you. went to the best authority I knew on that subject, Stevie Wonder. You were kidding. And he, he, yeah, of course I asked him that. I was friend, good friends with him, and he, I could ask him a question like that. And he said, you just do it when it, you keep doing it until there's a lot of friction. You can tell when there's... That makes it, sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. used a bidet. Oh, they had the bidet. Do you they really? Kind of yeah. Do you like bidet? I haven't used toilet paper in years. Do you have uh, a, unless I'm, you know, you have somewhere. A, you have a bidet in your home? home? Uh, I have a, a, a it's, it's a wand. You know, it yeah. uh, hooks up to the fa uh, faucet thing. Garden Isn't hose? paper just easier to use? Oh. I'm telling you, he's like Julius Caesar. Uh, his, uh, wand, his wand is made so you can do yourself an enema every day. And be clean for the whole day. What a great way By to go. By the way, we're down yeah. to the Never low. have emergencies to find the bathroom. We're down it's to the lowest too. number of the night right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're talking <laughs> shit. No, stop it. <laughs> I have to make this show family friendly so I don't get it demonetized. Oh, good luck. Okay, it's good shit. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Good shit is what you smoke. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, there was one item here I wanted to... Oops, let me go over here and get it. Well, look, we have two Bryans on the show now. Did you hear about Gavin Newsom, what he did today? What happened? No. Did yeah. he cheat on his wife again? No, 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 no. Okay. And that was years ago, by the way. What's the difference? I know, you'll never let him forget. Did you ever cheat on your wife? Yeah. Okay, then shut the fuck up, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not Gavin Newsom. He's got better hair. <laughs> He's better looking, too. Um, he uh, ripped uh, into Fox News, OAN, Newsmax, calling them propaganda networks and announcing new state unit to combat misinformation. Uh, he said that uh, perhaps one of the great disinformation networks in America, One America News, for spreading a lot of misinformation about COVID. And he didn't stop there. He said, uh, I'm not just referring to Newsmax or primetime propaganda lineup of Fox News, but all of their um, pundits uh, that safely have been um, boosted, fully vaccinated, 
and still go on to promote this whole thing as being bad, okay? So, you know, he had, so Newsom, Newsom came, you know, came out, and, t and he said he's coming out with, like, uh, they, they have a group of people who are going to put together some information and stuff like that for people to get a place for them to get the information, you know, and get decent Nancy information. Nancy Pelosi not wearing a mask during the height of COVID as she got her hair done in a salon that was closed in San Francisco but opened for her. Nobody was there. Yeah. So, the so Newsom photo, I don't have anymore. <laughs> but uh, uh, of him in the uh, uh, French laundry uh, at, at the height of COVID, uh, not wearing his mask. And your We're, point is? My point is, is that he's disingenuous and he's uh, uh, yeah, but 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 Trump isn't disingenuous. No. Oh hey, well, no, that's okay. a what aboutism, huh? Uh, no, you know, no, no, I'm, no what aboutism. No, that's a question I just asked you about. Oh uh, no, he's not disingenuous. Okay. No. <laughs> he's a lot of other things. He's seventy-five. <laughs> he's not seventy-five. He's older than that. Oh, whatever. He Wait a minute. Is. Uh, here we'll go to the authority. Okay. Uh, Echo, how old is Donald Trump? Donald Trump is 75. Oh, he is 75. Oh, have a drink on Alex. <laughs> I thought he was about 77, something like that. Yeah. He acts like he's about four. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Ask Echo how old you are. Well, I, Echo knows. Echo, how old is Alex Bennett? Which Alex one? Bennett is 82 years old. 82 years old. He was born on December 18, 1939. See, it even has my birthday. You know. How many times did you have to talk to it to get it to? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm in Wikipedia. That's where it goes to find oh. out. You know. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of that Alex Bennett thing I sent you from uh, uh, Barstool Sports and uh, Dave um, Portnoy? To begin with, I've never heard of this Dave Portnoy. Never heard of him. You never heard of Dave Portnoy? No. Or Barstool Sports? No. Or his oh, pizza yeah. reviews? Yeah, like, like of course. I'm I'm very big into sports. Well, he's got a million followers. No, he goes around all over the country eating pizza. He takes one bite and then he rates it, and uh, he can make or break a pizza parlor uh, by his his review. Well, anybody can become a star for any reason. But anyway, I never heard of the guy. And you told me, you led me to some kind of soundbite where he was literally railing Ranting. against Alex Bennett. Right. But it, it, it's, it got, I, it's got to be another <laughs> Alex Bennett. It was a woman that worked for him named Alex Bennett. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I thought you get a kick out of it, but uh, you know he's a well, big. YouTube I wrote on I wrote on his on his uh, Facebook page or whatever page it was posted on or YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I said, quite frankly, uh, I never said anything about you, and I don't even know who you are. Well, it would be great if he came on the show to talk to you because that would get you thousands of views. He sounded like a rather unsavory human being. So well, he's Jewish. Is he? <laughs> Up and oh, well, then he's got to be a great person, yeah, right? Def no, uh, he's um, he's uh, he's quite well known. I'm surprised. You, you know, never, heard never, never, never heard of him. Never heard of him. Has yeah. anybody else heard of David Port, Dave Portnoy, and I'm Barstool good. Sports? You have, right? Tony, Tony. Tony he knows. actually came to a pizzeria two blocks from my house, Alex. Yeah, yeah. I, and you guys, and you talked them out of out of the pizzeria. You were talking yeah. to him. His, his, his two top know. reviews in the country. One is DeFaro's in Brooklyn, and the other is John's on Bleecker. And uh, the, the highest ratings he's ever given a pizza parlor. I'll tell you, I've been to John's. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know, you know how, you, how you do good pizza in New York, how you get good pizza reviews and everybody beating a path to your door? You put more of something on the pizza. Like no, remember, New York pizza is thin, oily. And no, 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 no. no. It's, or Sicilian. It's thin, but you don't know thin pizza. 
I in New York one time I was in Brooklyn. You know, my ex-wife's name was Susan. She grew up in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Never had New York pizza. We were in Brooklyn for one reason or another, mm-hmm. and I said, "Just snap your fingers. I'll pull over at the first available parking space, and whatever pizza parlor is closest to the car, mm-hmm. we'll go into. If it's not the best pizza you ever had, I, I, I'll eat my hat." It was a raised pizza. You know, there's a million raised pizzas. Well, there. if you looked at it in the old days, if you looked up raised pizza in the in the phone book, in the book? there were like a hundred raised pizzas. Yeah. There was only one raised pizza, and that was on um, um, 6th Avenue uh, between 14th and 15th. So what did your hat taste like, Phil? <laughs> it, was, it was the best pizza she'd ever had. Wow, and, and I and I got her a Sicilian and a slice. But you know why Ray's Pizza became so famous? No. Because they put well. more cheese on the pizza. That's how you became a, 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 a you know a big. Is you just put I like, put more sausage on it, you know, put more uh, whatever out in California. Put more pineapple on it. Yeah, ham and pineapple. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but. Uh, Frankie, Johnny, and Luigi's. Hey, John Larkin, how are you? Nice bridge, John. I know. Extreme <laughs> Pizza in San Francisco. No, yeah. Fra- Frankie, Johnny, and Luigi's in Mountain View. I best never pizza, had that. Best pizza in the world. In really? case people just joined us, John Larkin has behind him the most beautiful bridge in America, which is the Golden, Golden Gate. Gate Golden Gate Bridge. It's just an, probably one of the most iconic bridges in the world. And in in back of Phil is one of the ugliest bridges in the United States, the Bay, San Francisco Bay Bridge. Yeah, well, I mean, I I got a, uh, you know, I don't transfer that many pictures to this uh, thing, but I, oh, here, here's a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. Duck, so we can see all of it. Yeah, well, it's, um, I took it in the fog uh, from, from a boat. Wait a minute. Ah, son of a bitch, I got it get out of the way oh, oh my god he's wearing pants tonight when he stood up <laughs> uh that's the golden gate also yeah it's a very nice shot yeah yeah it's not good for a background though no it's ter- terrible for a background uh, it was yeah, very the foggy sun and the, sun, the sun was just coming through and it had those rays on it you know it was... but you know it's hard to take a bad picture of the golden gate bridge yeah yeah, it really is. This one really of the most is. beautiful bridges. That was that was from your iPhone five, wasn't it, Phil? No. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, I got to get out of here because I've got to do a program called the Intersection. I'd like to extend an invitation to all of you that are with Alex. If you want to hang around uh, and come back, I'd appreciate it. No, you, you got food. Have, you got to have you, you giving out food. Am I going to have food? Yeah, here, here, okay. food. This. <laughs> it's on Skype. Hmm. Tell him, Jack. I, oh, oh, was, I'm sorry. Was, was that a cue? It, it, yeah. Skype us. Gabnet Live, Gabnet Live. And, Gabnet you know, Live. we'll talk about whatever's yeah. on your mind. Okay. Maybe you can talk about what we talked about last night. Yeah. Okay. See I'm you likely. later. Bye, Bye. Phil. Bye. Thank you. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, Brian, uh, the other Brian. We have two Brians tonight. We have Brian with an I and Brian with a Y. Oops. We just, uh, yeah. Uh, and Brian with a I, how are you doing this fine day? Good. I was hoping to talk about the Canada stuff with truckers for an hour tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, so when I, so I had a like, not an emergency, but I had to go up to Lodi unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. I found out last night. So I, I wasn't on the show. And then, uh, so I said, well, that's fine because then I can listen to it. You know, I get about half, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes to load eye. So I'll listen to it on the way there or back or a little bit of both. And yeah, I was glad I wasn't on the show last night. Well, time. I mean, it, I thought it was interesting because, I mean, you know, this is a big story. Okay. And yet, as Americans, we sit here and don't completely understand it. All we understand is that the Canadians have become assholes just like us. You know. I also think that it's government overreach, and oh, uh, what we understand is we're lucky to be in America uh, yeah. because in Canada, yeah. uh, they can't even blow their horn without getting arrested. 
Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Canada is the most fascist country in the world. And it's turned out. To oh, be, it's just turned out to be an absolute fascist. Uh, I I dare say they got there. Jack I, I dare I dare say now. Uh, I dare say that Justin Trudeau is is the same as Adolf Hitler. Well, no, I, I heard uh, someone <laughs> say that he was a haircut with an ego. Really? You, you don't get the joke I just pulled because you had what's his name uh, the uh, guy who's sending rockets up SpaceX. Uh, oh, Musk. Uh, Ma Musk. Ma okay. Musk. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. Uh, like, like you promised Steve last night, go on his Facebook and watch his TikTok videos. You promised him. The, uh, no, he, I, I I will go over there this weekend and he said, look at. He said it. that he would go to his feed. He didn't say he'd watch his. Well, he was. He, 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 what he was doing he was, is he was, and I don't want to talk about him while he's not here. But he was talking about, oh, you got to go to TikTok. There are TikTok videos of this, and I'm going, you know, TikTok is not a reputable news agency. If anything, it's an oh, arm of the he, Chinese he, government. But you he's know. posting like every 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 two hours. He's posting something on there. Anybody, then, he was very passionate. I thought he was very passionate last night. I'd never seen a side of him like that. Uh, he, that would have scared Rocky to dog. But, uh, you know, he, he, I think that his take on it is he just doesn't want to be told what to do. And uh, and that's the way. No, you don't want to be told what to do, but you're told you have to have a driver's license. You're told you have to do this. No, you're told you have to do that. They're being no, 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 Phil. Phil. Phil, Phil, by Jack. Phil, thumbs. you know, let's let's save uh, that they're fi we're fighting for our rights for a time when somebody is trying to take your rights away from you. This but is this is not that kind of deal, Phil. No, it's well, not. No, not no, even it's, close. It's because you you like to wear a mask. You've been no, scared I didn't say, to I, the point I, where no, I I don't like to wear a mask, and I haven't been unduly scared. I've I I know that there are over nine hundred thousand dead people in the United States and a good deal of them recently have been the ones who don't get vaccinated and don't wear masks okay and and quite frankly uh, this is a question of public health and public welfare and no more no less this isn't oh I have to have my freedoms to not wear a mask well then if you don't want to wear a mask don't go out the, outdoors don't go into a supermarket don't go out to a restaurant Okay. Maybe, maybe it would be okay if they could make their own personal choice as to whether they're going to wear a mask. No, or they can't make their own personal choice because this is a matter of public welfare. It, it, if you want to and wear bottom a bottom line, and bottom line is Phil, that that more than any other single factor, and I think uh, most people here will agree with me, it's being good to your neighbor. Okay, it's well, it's being it's being many, it's being a good American. It's being a good citizen. It's uh, does anybody disagree with what I'm saying? Yes. No, Look how many counties and states have now dropped the mass mandates across the United States. And how many of them are Republican? Uh, well, what about San Francisco? Is that a Republican? Uh, they strong? haven't done away completely with the mask mandate in no, San no, Francisco. No, they're making infants wear them, but everybody else. No, 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 no. If you if you go into a restaurant or whatever, still in San Francisco, they haven't done away with mask mandates. They've done Have away. Contra Costa. Well, that's Contra well, they're Costa. Idiots. They're idiots. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's 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 a good uh, way to. Well, I think you are an idiot if you're. You know, it, they're thinking of doing away with the masks here in New York City, but well, if I did. go into the subway, I'm still going to wear one. I'm sorry. No, you have yeah. to wear one in a subway. No, but you I'm saying what I'm saying is in a post th office. They're thinking, you have to wear one in an airport. Yes, John. How many people have actually been arrested for not wearing a mask? Zero. Yeah. 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 But, well, but and, and, I don't want, and I don't want to talk about Steve when he's not here either. But some of the stuff that he's posting, you know, he posts, there's, uh, let me put it this way there's a TikTok video of somebody getting arrested and the cops are shutting up about it. And they're saying, oh, these are fake cops. Look, they don't have badge numbers. They don't have this in Canada. I don't know if they have the badge numbers on there, but whatever. But, you know, the person who's narrating it is definitely saying what they're, what they want you to see. Like, wow, that person's just talking and they're getting arrested. 
and the cops are just looking at the guy. The guy and the cops aren't going to say, no, we're arresting them because of this blah, 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 blah. The cops are just doing their job, doing whatever they're arresting that person for. But this person narrating it is trying to tell a story, whether that story is true or not. But now that gets put on TikTok or it gets put on any kind of social media. And now you're interpreting what that person is saying, which could be a total lie. Yeah. But I also watched Fox today for quite a while and tried to get some more of the story. And they're doing the same <laughs> thing. And I watched Tucker tonight, too. And, and Tucker was also talking about the martial law declaration and how they're taking away all the money. And I didn't get the whole story, so i throw that disclaimer in there. But they are claiming all the Bitcoin uh, yeah. stuff on exchanges only and you can hold your own bitcoin very easily by putting it into your own account and using your 12 words yeah. and you can keep your money you don't your money won't be taken away if you keep it in your own account now then there were there were two things there was, i've got the floor phil phil, phil, phil all right kevin's got the floor let him finish so i got the floor you, <laughs> i'm the floor guy <laughs> will you let him finish please phil yeah Go so if you got your money in your own account, they won't take your money. They can't take your money. So if you've got it in an exchange, they can probably get it. Mm, yeah. So that's that's the points. That those are the points that are not being expressed. And Tucker sat there, and he made a whole thing about how the government is taking your money and they're just taking it and you can't get a hold of it. Blah blah blah. And they got this guy on, and talked to him, and he said, "That's not necessarily true. You can." Keep your money if you've got your 12 words and it's in your account it's all good if, if Don't it's put in, it in an exchange kevin kevin what they were talking about was the gofundme money and there was another kind of we're talking uh, about bitcoin cloud, period. Under cloud funding digital uh, coins that's all well they're saying that if you did it in bitcoin then and i didn't watch tucker today. and it went into an exchange yes you right lose. you you could do that but you uh, as have far it in as your own account I, it didn't yes. go nowhere. But two crowdfunding things were confiscated by the government. Well, it one exchange. They, they, hmm? It's going to an exchange. This is not a Bitcoin exchange. This was a crowdfunding with real dollars uh, that well, was. Well, that I don't know. Yeah, I told you and, in the and, and, I disclaimed. And, and, I didn't know at all. I was just talking about the Bitcoin. Yeah, and, and, and how, do you, how do you know that those people who are doing the, the funding are legitimate? Well, there was uh, one woman uh, who uh, owned a restaurant donated $25 and they actually doxed her. And then people are protesting Doctor. at a restaurant and, and, and she's in tears. Uh, uh, I don't know where her restaurant is. It could be in Canada. But uh, so there was there was the GoFundMe and there was another crowdfunding thing I never heard of. But uh, I don't know whether it's legitimate or not, but I guess it's a, a big one similar to GoFundMe. And. Uh, the government seized that money. The GoFundMe was refunded back to the uh, individuals that donated. So, but, to it, I think. But so what they it. said was, if you used mm. Bitcoin, the government wouldn't be able to touch that. But I don't, I don't know nothing about Bitcoin. I don't even know how to birth. An, I don't know how to birth any babies. You know, like uh, uh, Butterfly McQueen. But. Uh, what? You know, uh, well, well, I, 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 I'd mind mine well, for what, what I, Brian was saying is that yeah. they are they are uh, selectively editing some of these mm -hmm. videos that are going around. Even Fox was because I saw the same oh. thing. I think Brian saw. Yeah. I'm sure there was an arrest and there was a confrontation on the street and it was cut right when the cop rock walked up there mm -hmm. and the guy was talking which way do i go do you want me to go this way or do you want me to go that way and the guy says you're under arrest boom and they cut it mm -hmm. and they didn't finish it yeah yeah and he had just right. had a decent well you got to remember I, and i i said this last well, you know, night you know, you know this this you is see. this is a screen there's a yes. lot of stuff that goes on outside of that screen and where that camera decides to point itself is the prejudice that's given to a story. And where the editor wants to edit it. Exactly. Hey, listen, they, I had the theme going and everything. Uh, first of all, say goodnight to your pussy. Uh, Night pussy. <laughs> yeah, what's, the, what's the name of the cat, Brian? Misty. Misty. Oh, I had my hand raised, and then she was so titillated, she came up and she started getting What were face. you going to say? Quick, did you have something to say? Uh, yeah, this whole Canada thing's an indictment of stupidity, economic.
Yeah. It, the truckers up there are idiots wasting their own billable time, and the Canadians are just they're they're, they're stifling their own economy. Yeah. It, both yeah. sides of this issue is stupid. I, I just can't take yeah. it. Anyway, that oh, that's oh, it Lord. for tonight. We got to go, uh, Alan. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Thank you to the uh, first Brian with a Y. And thanks to Jeff. I think he's asleep now, which is which is fine. You know, I, I, I it's cleaning his teeth. And uh, thank you very much, Phil, for being here tonight. Uh, Tony, good having you here. And uh, Brian with a with an I. Thank you for being here. Oh, look at that cat. It's terrific. And of course, the uh, lovely and attractive. Uh, John Larkin, thanks, thank you for joining us. Even though it was a bit late, we love seeing you. You know, you're an old friend. And uh, let me see here. Who did we lose, by the way? We lost somebody here. I don't know who. Jeff hasn't said anything tonight. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, I, I just like Jeff being here, you know? Anyway, <laughs> good night to all of you. And uh, why don't you Jeff, give a big wave goodbye, Jeff. and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel, uh, and they're through for tonight. Uh, we'll they'll be back again next week, I'm sure. Many of them, and it was a, it was a fun kind of light conversation tonight, for the most part. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again on Monday on Facebook with uh, the uh, pop-up show, and then back here again on Wednesday at 10 30 same time same station in life in the meantime if you see her tell her i love her okay and by the way wear a mask and if you don't wear a mask make sure you're inoculated vaccinated have a nice weekend everybody bye bye